be a pretty view, but today we have rain. First day with rain in Spain, where it falls mainly on the plain. Tons and tons and tons of olive trees. This region of Spain produces more olives than Italy, Greece, and Turkey combined. This is our scenic photo stop. And here's an olive tree right up close. I see they've uh, had fires out here and burned the trimmings. Some houses spread out. And olive trees as far as you can see. Remember the 1,000 year old olive tree still producing. Generally speaking, the old trunk will always spring a new shoot. And they cut the little shoot off and they put it in a pot, like a baby olive tree, until it gets big enough. And then they plant it with a little cone around the bottom to make sure that a rabbit doesn't come and nick it off, <laughs> or goats or whatnot. So they always have a little plastic cone around the bottom to give stability and also to keep it from blowing over in the wind. They get about one gallon or four liters of oil from a tree. Think about how much work that is. The, by, the byproduct that's left over after they've pressed the olives is called orujo, and the orujo they use, they can use it to make cardboard boxes, they can use it in laboratories, and they're very, the, the, the leftover pit is very resistant to chemicals, so they use those in laboratories. harvest the olives, they would fill these up in the fields. Then they would bring it in and use these big wheels to mash the olives and the pits, mashing them a little later. And then after they're mashed, they put them between some mats and press down. And what comes out first is the extra virgin. And the more you press, the lower the quality. The mats that were stacked up with the olive kind of puree on them to get the oil out. Ways of mashing up olives. We're just pressed with this roller and you can see the oil coming out. And here's another one. A whole pile of the mats that they would put the uh, puree on and then press. Big scale, we saw one like this with a wine barrel. How old this tree is, and it's pruned drastically every year. But that trunk shows how old it is. It was used into the 50s. These big cones would rotate around and smash up the uh, olive. And here where it got spun around and separated out from the water. And then it would go into this round drum. And this is another way they would stack these up all the way up to here and then lift them up and press the oil out. Okay, here's a neat statue in Cordoba on Easter Sunday in the rain. A huge, big building. It was a Roman temple. Then the Visigoths had something there. And then the Muslims tore that down and built a huge mosque. And then they've built a church inside the mosque. We'll have to go check that out closer. Oh, and there's the bell tower that was a minaret. This is part of the ceiling of the old mosque slash church was this was minaret and now of course it's a bell tower oldest Roman cities in Spain four columns over here that are Roman it was a mosque before it was a Christian church and boy it's sure 
obvious, of course, were added by the Christians. 32,000 men could lay prostate in here. This mosque was built on top of an old Roman city. And looking through glass, we can see the floor. Nine years ago, originally was a silica. Then became the big century AD. Roman 90%, Roman 10%. This is off. Second edition, as you can see later. And then this is Arabic. Christians took down part of the old building and used about 20 to 200 columns. It went from 1,000 to 800. In Cordoba, his first mosque. We see in this building four Muslim parts, two big Christian construction, and about 45 individual Christian chapels this. Acoustic and interior work magnificent. Those characteristics were lost when Christian people later added large walls, especially when we look at people in the middle of this building. Now we have the 856 columns. Good. From under here, from the one of the eight columns of under here. The floor was all carpeted. Christian edition, 1100 years old. Renaissance style. Baroque on the ceiling. The ceiling up here. Unbelievable. Died for their religion between 1936 and 39. That was the edition made by Abdul Rahman. Another group that were killed for their religion between 1936 and 39. Way on down here. Arches are a thousand years old. Uh, Muslim because it's only geometric designs. This is 500 years old during the period of Isabel and Ferdinand, the, the 1400s. The ceiling is 500 years old from that same time. The wood comes from the north of Spain. Second edition built during the 10th century. Here is a copy, but even then the copy is from the 19th century. Ionic capital. No so well preserved. This is is a much better condition. The head of the family could come here. There were lots of other mosques for the rest of the family. Second edition, a thousand years old. Cordoba at one time was the largest city in Europe. Istanbul came here to do this a thousand years ago or so. is when the first part was built. Last edition was in 1766, hundred years old. Ferdinand III. Well, especially in this part of Spain. That is the Fernando III. Cordova, 1236. You can see ceiling in this little chapel. This door 